As we pursue a wide range of knowledge and skills, we have to embrace a variety of different learning techniques. But the most effective learning doesn't happen the way you might think. In one study, two rhesus macaque monkeys named Oberon and Macduff were shown various random pictures on a screen. A tulip, a school of fish, Halle Berry, etc. And they were tasked with memorizing them in a particular order. In some practice sessions, Oberon and Macduff were automatically given hints for the next picture in the sequence. For other lists, they could touch a hint box on the screen whenever they got stuck. And for the final group of lists, there were no hints available at all. When test day came, the memorizing monkeys had to recall all the lists, in order, from every training condition with no hints whatsoever. And it was a performance disaster. Oberon only got about one-third of the lists right, and Macduff got less than one in five. There was, however, one exception. The lists on which they never had hints to begin with. For those lists, the duo had performed terribly on day one of practice, but they steadily improved. And on test day, Oberon remembered almost three quarters of them, and Macduff nailed about half. Overall, the more hints that were available during training, the better the monkeys performed during early practice, and the worse they performed on test day. That may seem counterintuitive, but the monkey's performance starts to make sense when we turn to the science of human learning. Cognitive psychologist Nate Cornell writes about desirable difficulties, obstacles that make learning more challenging, slower, even more frustrating in the short term, but better in the long term. One of those desirable difficulties is visible in the generation effect, in which struggling to generate an answer on your own, even a wrong one, enhances subsequent learning. So when Oberon and Macduff repeatedly tried and failed to remember the list without any hints at all, they were making real progress in their learning, even though it didn't seem like it at the time. The science of human learning also tells us that what's called blocked practice, practicing the same thing repeatedly using the same procedure, leads to excellent immediate performance. But if you want knowledge to be flexible and easily applied to the many domains of a generalist, it should actually be learned under varied conditions, a type of practice called interleaving. For example, say you plan to visit a museum and you want to be able to identify the artist of various paintings. Before you go, instead of studying a stack of, say, Cezanne flashcards, then a stack of Picasso flashcards, and then a stack of Renoir, you should put the cards together, shuffle them up so they become interleaved. You'll struggle more, for sure, and you will feel less confident in identifying each artist during practice. But you'll be better equipped on museum day to discern each painter's unique style, even for paintings that weren't in the flashcards at all. So if you're learning something new to expand your range, remember the power of the generation effect and of interleaved practice and use them to your advantage. It's okay to get frustrated and wonder if you're making progress at all, but be patient. You may actually be on the right track.